Okay, so if there are two things that I love to talk about on this channel, it's sniper rifles and how much Valorant loves to rip off Counter-Strike. That's right, Peter. I'm you and you're me. And this is a god. But before we go on, I gotta say, for as much as I love to poke fun at Riot, it makes sense. Counter-Strike is the most successful tax shooter of all time. It's also the most foundational. So you'd be really silly not to take most of your inspiration from it. That said, there are certain things that Valorant decided not to take from CSGO. More specifically, certain offerings on the buy menu that were left behind. And with good reason. You see, as much as we praise CSGO's gameplay, it does continue to have an oddly bloated arsenal. Some guns are as expensive as they are useless, and others are really more of a meme than anything else. Hey, we need, we need JW Cam because I, I don't care what else happened. No, no, oh no! For that reason, Valorant made a deliberate decision to streamline its list of weapons. There was no need for seven SMGs when two would suffice. Riot was looking to make a competitive shooter with so-called precise gunplay that focused on agents, meaning that there wasn't a hell of a lot of room for a taser. And this is a throwback, would be Ricky. Ricky from Australia, look at it. He just zaps fur out of the sky like a lightning bolt. However, there is one weapon that Riot opted to take that we do find a bit curious. I am of course talking about the Marshall, Valorant's version of the Scout. I say it's curious because there's pretty much no other weapon in CSGO that plays a more unique and nuanced role than the Scout. It's a fast and flicky sniper that has been the ultimate choice for players trying to flex their ability to, well, literally click on heads. Zaiwu, he's flashed off the angle, so now they get dangerously close to him. There is still the Fomus in the mix, and Zaiwu, oh how God. is this man still standing? Dude, I Three don't... kills with the scout. So what separates Riot's Marshall from Valve's scout? And is one better than the other, or are they both sort of quietly overpowered? If those are the questions you're asking yourself, then good, because I think I figured it out, and I really didn't want to put all that work in for nothing. The Ster SSG-08, or Scharfschützengewehr, you know what, let's just call it the Scout for simplicity's sake. The Scout has been in Counter-Strike since the very beginning of the franchise, and although it had slightly different names and slightly different looks, it's always done the same job. Either one or two shots to the body, depending on armor, but always one shot to the head. A weapon so crisp, so clean, and so skillful, it spawned one of the series' most beloved game modes. Scout knives and custom servers aside, the Scout has played a very important role in both the history and evolution of Counter-Strike. Its significance at the pro level, however, was amplified tenfold with the release of Global Offensive. This was largely owed to its super efficient price tag of just $1,700. This made the Scout the ultimate eco choice, not just for oppers looking to save up for the big green, but anyone willing to take a gamble with long range engagements. Signals of BMS is close, JW realizes it. Oh, his attack, can't get the kill, but cold down in the second shot, JW not stopping. Oh my, three with a scout, how does he do it? I say gamble, but it isn't really. In fact, out of all the eco choices, the scout is pretty much one of the most low risk weapons in the game. A lot of this has to do with tagging potential. Sure, landing a super crispy headshot and deleting a dude from the server is the ticket. But even if you just land tag after tag, body shot after body shot, you can really thwart your enemy's plans. Does mean Perfecto can take him down. Oh no, if this translates into a round, his balance is gonna be very red faced. Another tag from the scout puts Magics on notice down to 15. All three are fighting. It's gonna be all six members towards Yard. Another frag. 
It's working. The scout alone has made the round out of nothing. Simple went down early. Electronic recovering a frag and a rifle that now sits on Boomich. He's gone down. Perfecto. Go on, Perfecto. Finishes it with four. On top of all this, there's just something about the scout. There's a reason there are countless videos of pug demons dedicating their time to perfecting their scout expertise. Being able to consistently hit heads with a scout is nothing short of a power move. And to some, there is nothing more satisfying or disheartening. A scout headshot or a headshot with one of the two pistols, just a one set. It just feels so good. You, you know the opponent is going to be frustrated, he's going to be left thinking, why did this happen to me? But what about Valorant's counterfeit, the Marshal? Does it play the same role and provide the same sensation? Well, for the most part, yes. The two guns are extremely similar. Both are two shots to the body, one if they don't have armor, and one to the head, no matter the armor. And I think it's completely fair to say that the Marshal is equally satisfying. Like, so good against, like, Sentinel J. He's still looking what? good! Hitting onto the head. And with that, things are looking up, but I didn't see that cap on. It's here, Rossi. They're gonna be able to get a couple of what? points. That's good for the no! The shots were so clean and they were so crispy! Looking at the chat. The three minute delay later, seeing everyone start to explode when something. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my! What? <laughs> When it comes to cost, which in my opinion is where the Marshal really shines, it is only a mere 950 credits. That's only 150 credits more than the Sheriff. And you get a scope. That is a value f***ing buy if you ask me. Now, as mentioned, both guns also kill with one shot to the body when the enemy is unarmored. However, in CSGO, it's only one shot if it's to the stomach slash pelvis and not to the chest, which is worth noting. But the fact that both guns are one shot to the body without armor makes them very, very deadly anti-eco buys. They were able to get some weapons going on and of course the Marshall on breathes so Whoa! Guys, this is just target practice for Screwface. When it comes to scope and speed, they're both pretty comparable. But I should note that the scout does get two levels of magnification, making it more versatile at longer ranges. It should also be noted that the movement speed for both guns is very fast in comparison to the premium sniper rifles of their respective games. But that's something we'll touch on later, because before that, we need to go through some pretty big differences between these marked down murder sticks. You see, the unscoped accuracy of the scout is f***ing ludicrous for a sniper. Even after the nerf in 2016, jump scouting is pretty dangerous. Like, you can still do shit like this. Simple, I swear, if you do anything ridiculous now, I am going to- oh, oh, there That's it is. just ridiculous! <laughs> no, absolutely not. He made me sound like a gorilla. The Marshall, however, is pretty much a laser beam in comparison. You even get to keep your crosshair, and because it's that accurate from the hip, sometimes you don't even need the scope. Bring us here, already heat's gonna spot out most of the play, and also just takes off. Oh, McKeever's had the full up as well. This ain't pretty. <laughs> Doesn't need to zoom in. Doesn't need to zoom in. Oh, oh, heat, get out of here. On top of that, the Marshal's rate of fire is just insane. Like, the scout's rounds per minute is 48, whereas the marshal's is a whopping 90. That being said, the marshal only has five rounds in the magazine, with three reserve magazines, and the scout has 10 rounds per mag and 90 bullets in reserve. So you do need to be a bit more careful with your shots when using the marshal. But for some players, the bullets tend to find their way regardless. Oh my nice. god. So when it comes to which one is better, I would say the Marshall. Yes, at a glance, they do the exact same thing, but the cost, rate of fire, and unscoped accuracy on the Marshall cannot be understated. To further bolster our case, our boy Ominous found out what players were the most economically efficient, comparing credits spent versus damage output. And it's no surprise that some of the game's most fiscally responsible fraggers are also notorious martial maniacs. Quite working, not quite going as far up as they wanted. Good pick out of Aspis. Up against opponents with no shields to play with here 
essentially has an operator to work with, and look at him, <laughs> making it work, left, right, and center, three kills, make it four, nice. and then, right. that's how you get away with a Prime Gaming Flawless, isn't it, just ace out the round. But these are two eco-weapons from two different shooters that, despite being very similar, do have totally different economies. So it feels kind of weird to say that one is inherently better than the other. Which is why we're about to get into the real question of the day. Are either of these discount decapitators better than their luxury counterparts? I'm serious, I wanna know. Are either of these guns, from a value standpoint, actually better than the AWP? And now, the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. Hold on, you're expecting me to know? Back to the tax shooter gun stats, I guess. The whole, is the scout overpowered conversation has been around for a while in Counter-Strike, and the Valorant community is seemingly swimming in martial one tricks. And I think it's fair to say that the hype on these two weapons is real, since, at least on paper, the scout and the martial are probably better than the AWP and the operator. As Dimitri brought up before, both eco snipers shoot faster than their high caliber older siblings, especially in the case of the Marshall. Another piece that's important, and you'll probably remember us bringing up in the Op vs. Up video, is the movement speed, which is also significantly faster, both scoped and unscoped. And since both of them are always a one shot kill to the head, it should just be as simple as the faster weapon always winning. Right? Well, not always. You see, the Ops are better in one very important aspect. They both deal a lot more damage and can one-shot kill almost anywhere on the body, even through most objects. At the end of the day, clicking on heads is essentially what both of these games revolve around. If you really think about it, strats, utility, all other aspects of gameplay really just boil down to either helping you click heads or keeping yours from being clicked. Now, obviously people aren't aimbots, but what if you got really, really good with the Scout or Marshall. Well, when it comes to pros at the top of both games, people got so good with these two guns that it called into question whether or not nerfs should be implemented. I do think the Marshall is overpowered. I think the fact that it shoots so fast makes it just like, you can just buy it and take it into the next round. You, It does so much damage. Like, I think I think the speed, the fire rate speed on the Marshall should be like nerfed, I think and then it would be like an okay gun. So could somebody exploit the scout if they wanted to? I mean, technically yes. The closest thing we've had to that was Big Searson in 2020. That year, he made up 7.7% .7 of all scout kills amongst the top 30 teams in the world. And for his trouble, it helped make him the first German to be on the HLTV top 20 in dim and that's a quick demise. Saracen will get a tag which is good but it's not a kill. He'll have to reface for that and he's successful in finding it. Ooh. Continues to rain Ooh. fire and hell. Brimstone will come through and swallow up God said. A bonus here for a big one. Oh, Searson though. Not even that performance can save their Inferno right now. You said oh, at the start of this one that a round win like this would be telling. And you better believe Big used his proficiency to their advantage. You could give Searson a scout, he would get at least a bunch of tags, and the rest of the team could finish the job with just pistols. This made Big a pretty dangerous team to face, especially when they were low on cash. Searson did this so often that he netted over twice as many kills with the scout as he did with the AK. And there is still a T retreating back from that position. They are gonna try to challenge Searson on the cross and you can't afford to make this mistake. <laughs> Dude. He hits that next one too. This is just ridiculous. I mean, you've got to flash the guy. His scout shoots magnetized bullets or some shit because it's, it's uncanny what Dude. he does to these <laughs> players. And he could very well drop these next two frags on top of it all. Oh, are you? Unreal! And if a team wanted to do the same thing in Valorant, it could certainly be done to at least similar effect. But with all of that being said, there is one important thing to keep in mind. Most levels of both games are about risk versus reward. If you have the money to afford the higher damage sniper, it generally isn't worth the risk of sticking with the scout or the marshal. Even the best players in the world don't hit every shot. So I guess to answer your question, Dimitri, sure. You could technically call the Scout and the Marshal the statistically better sniper rifles. At least, if you're an aimbot. 
And that was the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. Just aim for the head. All right, that's easy. Well, I mean, it's not, but I guess that's the rub. Like Colton mentioned, if shooting people in the head were that simple, then everyone would use the cheap snipers. Even simple, but it isn't. Which is maybe what makes them so special, because those who can wield either of them with expert precision can just do things that the rest of us can't. Exchange of the headshots puts it into a perfect position for poison. He's been sitting, waiting, and oh! What? What is that? <laughs> Try to pick this guy with uh, my scout. Let's see. Done. Fall over the scout. He's a headshot. He's got it. Good stuff. Warp does see him cross pit side, but G2 not feeling pressure to peak. They've got the advantage. And he goes for oh it anywhere. My. That is a filthy flick from the feet to the face from Fallen. And Riot probably decided to include their own scout for that very reason. It's fun, satisfying, gives way to a little BM, and won't leave a hole in your economy. It's sort of like Taco Bell. It's Marshall and it's tense, so you don't count it out. Oh my gosh, you don't count it out! Taco Bell is a brand that believes in living mass. And if you really think about it, both the Marshall and the Scout are truer tests of someone's sniping ability than perhaps the most famous gaming sniper of all time. So next time you get flamed for holding on to your scout or marshal during a full buy, ignore it. These guns are god tier and fully serviceable against gun rounds. As long as, you know, you hit your shots. Stare SSG 08 or what the f <laughs> The Scharfschützen given? Yeah, the Scharfschützen. Schützengewehr. Yeah, yeah. Scharf Schützengewehr. Scharf Schützengewehr. Scharf Schützengewehr. Scharf Schützengewehr. Scharf Schützengewehr. Scharf Schützengewehr. He's German. Scharf Schützengewehr. Please don't do anything that would make me fucking lose a take, Centra. I'm begging you. Please. It's like Taco Bell. Taco Bell is none of those things. Look at one of those things. Oh, gives, no, no, we gotta, we gotta, gives way to a little BM. There it is, there it is. There it is. There it is. That's why I'm the writer, Colton. This is why they pay me the big bucks.